Violence is a disease. You don't cure a disease by spreading it to more people. You don't cure it by dying either. After spending most of the season being appalled at the Faith Militant, Episode 7, The Broken Man, gives us followers of the Seven who seem like good people, religious but humble, dedicated to nonviolence, more interested in building seps than making power plays. Of course, they all had to be viciously murdered. In Season 3, the Brotherhood Without Banners were a Robin Hood-esque band of outlaws. Sure, they sold Gendry to Melisandre. Their means were not always honorable, but their ends were just. You've got nothing to fear from us, son. The Lords of Westeros want to burn the countryside. We're trying to save it. Now they're just regular outlaws preying viciously on the common folk they used to protect. What in Westeros happened? The night is dark and full of terrors. Ian McShane's preacher character has a theory that violence spreads like a disease, and it sure seems the Brotherhood is proving his theory right. In the years since we've seen them, it seems their mission to protect has become an excuse to pillage and exploit. In this, they're quite a bit like the noble lords they hate so much. Feudal lords also offered protection in exchange for loyalty and service, but as their vassals soon learn, the protection is often more hypothetical than actual. And where was King Rob? When the Ironborn attacked this castle, when they threw my wife and children in prison and brutalized and killed our subjects. Across the Narrow Sea, another organization was created to protect the Lowborn from the Highborn, the Faceless Men. They were founded by escaped slaves and helped establish the free city of Bravos. But to the preacher's point, violence corrupts and time has taken its toll. Now the Faceless Men are just like the Brotherhood, a group of murderers who take pleasure in killing those who do not submit to them. <laughs> We have the past with the Faceless Men and the present with the Brotherhood, which means we're looking at a third heel turn for the future to round things out. So who on the show claims to stand for the weak and the vulnerable, but is looking like she might just be ditching that mission and instead choosing to, in the words of her father, burn them all? Many people cheered last week when Daenerys gave her dragonback speech to her Kalisar, but the themes of this episode confirm that she might, in fact, be turning into the villain of the show. As heroes become villainous, some villains are becoming heroic, or at least more human. The Hound has a pretty terrible past. Remember the Butcher's Boy? The Butcher's Boy. You rode him down. He ran. Not very fast. But now he's a man of faith, or at least doing his best to start anew. Unfortunately, violence has found him again, and like Arya, Sansa, and so many others, he's charting a course for revenge. First stop, the Brotherhood. The hanged preacher would tell him not to do it, preaching pacifism as the answer. But we don't think the show is really saying that. It's more complicated, because clearly sometimes there are fights so important that violence is the only answer. The battle to take back Winterfell, the fight against the White Walkers. But the preacher is right that violence begets violence, and Sandor's revenge is proof of that. Does that make Sandor wrong? I don't think the show is saying one way or another, just asking the question. And sometimes Sandor's violence saves lives. Remember that time back in season one when he saved Loras from the mountain? Sadly, sometimes violence is the only answer to defend yourself and others against oppressive forces. But enough with all this highfalutin philosophy talk. Let's talk about what really matters. Hashtag Clegane Bowl. It's been a fan theory for a long time that the season one fight between the Clegane brothers was just a taste and one day we were finally gonna see them throw down. Sandor's apparent death threw cold water on that argument, but he's back from the dead just like his brother and as angry as ever. How might Clegane Bowl happen? Well, we have Loras hold up with the faith, the same faith Sandor has adopted. Cersei has already said the mountain will be her champion. Perhaps the faith will force Loras to fight for them as his penance. That sets up a scenario identical to season one, and perhaps Sandor will step in once more to save Loras and finally get his revenge. They made a point in this episode to show us how much of his strength Sandor has recovered. We know he's about to go on a killing spree against the Brotherhood, suggesting that, yep, he may have a limp, but it barely slows him down. Sandor hates the Lannisters, fuck the king, but he's joined the faith. He doesn't know that the High Sparrow is a cynical operator. He'll just see a minister like the one he loved, who stands up for the common folk and for the Seven. He has every reason to go against the Mountain, who disfigured him as a child. Of course, everything in King's Landing is on a knife edge right now, and there may not be enough time for Sandor to make his way there before anarchy or invasion burns it to the ground. The Hound may want his revenge, but if Game of Thrones teaches us anything, it's that we can't always get what we want. Will Jon and Sansa get what they want and find enough soldiers to take back Winterfell? Maybe we'll find out next week on House Slate.